love your enemies. These are perhaps the three most subversive words from the most influential man of all time. Love him or hate him. Believe he was God or believe he has blinded billions. From our calendars to our communities, Jesus of Nazareth has shaped the world as we know it. His words have never gone out of print and his influence has never died. And these three words were perhaps the most subversive of all of his, found in his most famous speech, the Sermon on the Mount. These words were not what his audience were looking for, and they go against the grain of everything I know, everything you know, and the world as we thought it worked. You see, this is as true today as it was then. These words were subversive. You see, to the Jews in the audience, an ethnic minority amidst the colossal Roman Empire, this wasn't what they were looking for. They were looking for this famous man to deliver them from the Romans, not tell them to love their enemies. And to the Romans who would hear this, they would say, Jesus, 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 I don't think you get it. You see, we didn't build the strongest military machine the world has ever seen by loving our enemies. I'm afraid you're mistaken, Jesus. But you see, this entire sermon is built on these subversive ideas. He uses this structure in which he repeats, you have heard it said, but I say over and over, essentially telling the people, you thought the world worked like this, but I'm telling you, it doesn't. What he's saying is, you thought this is how things are, but I'm telling you this is how things could be. And this is how things should be. So when he gets to the portion of this sermon where he talks about loving your enemies, he says, you have heard it said, love your neighbor and hate your enemies. To which they say, yes, sounds about right. That's how we operate. That's how the world works, Jesus. What he's saying here when he says love your neighbors is he's saying love those who believe like you believe. Love those who look like you look. Love those who love you back. And what he's saying with hate your enemies is, well, do what you've always done. When someone does you wrong, get even. This is the viewpoint he's summarizing. This is what he's saying. You thought the world worked like this. So he says, love your neighbor and hate your enemies. That's what you've heard said, but I say. And this is where he inserts his teaching. This is where he stands in opposition to the status quo. He says, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, which is to say, love those who don't love you back. Love those who are different than you. Love those who stand in opposition to your ideas and maybe to you as a person. And by pray for those who persecute you, what he's saying is want nothing but the best for those who want nothing but your worst. And this, this teaching, it changes everything because at the core of this teaching is the idea that all people matter. And you might say, of course, Austin, all people matter. But what he's saying is even the people who you had deemed too far gone, no matter what someone has said, no matter what someone has done, the inhumane actions someone has taken, they are still human and they still matter and they deserve love. And this idea goes against everything we know. It goes against our idea, our neat categories of good people and bad people and what they deserve. Because he is saying even those who have done the worst deserve love. And this idea changes everything. He is saying even if someone has done the inhumane, they are still human. And this idea is so important because the first step to hating someone you have to hear this. The first step to hate is always dehumanizing the other person. Dehumanizing the person on the other side of the issue. Dehumanizing the person on the other side of the world. On the other side of the war. The first step to hating someone is to dehumanize them. Because we know deep down inside of us that people are people and that people deserve love. We know that. It's deep within us. So in order to hate someone, we first dehumanize them. Because when we can dehumanize them, we can do as we wish. 
fact, when we dehumanize someone, it leaves the door open to the inhumane, which leads to us, not them, becoming less than human. And so in order to carry out this teaching, this radical, subversive idea of loving our enemies, it takes a perspective shift. It takes seeing people as human, period, end of sentence, no footnote, no qualifying statement, no but, no what if. And that is powerful and that is hard. And Jesus recognizes this. If it was easy, he wouldn't have had to tell us. He says it's easy to love those who love us back. It's natural to us. We get that. But it is hard to love those who don't love us back. But in order to get where we've never been, we must do what we've never done. And this, this is different. But you know and I know. Whether you believe that Jesus was right on other things or not, he got this one right. That love for our enemies is the way forward. And you want a brighter future and I want a brighter future. And we both know that love is at the core of this. This is why when Martin Luther King Jr. said, darkness cannot drive out darkness, only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate, only love can do that. He wasn't making this up arbitrarily. He was pulling on the same idea, the same sermon on loving our enemies because he knew that hate against hate yielded more hate. But love against hate, that love was the most powerful force in the world. That love could drive out hate. That love could give us what we both desire, the better world that we both long for. We must love our enemies. What would the world look like if we loved our enemies, if we loved those who didn't love us back? I dream of that world, and I think you do too. I know you do too. A world in which despite our differences, a world in, despite our grievances, we showed love to everyone. We believed that all people matter, that all people deserve love, period, end of sentence. It yields the world I want, it yields the world you want. And that's why Jesus said this. It wasn't let me give an arbitrary command to these people and watch them suffer under the weight of it. No, he was saying, this is the way the world works. If we want to get better, we must do this. Love your enemies. It's hard. It is so hard. But it is worth it. It's what we need, need, need. It's what our communities need. It's what our families need. It's what our schools need. It's what our workplaces need. And it's what our world needs needs. Love your enemies. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this video. It really means the world to me that you guys would take time out of your day to hear my thoughts on this matter and really to hear what Jesus had to say on this. I wasn't coming up with this on my own. I think this is an absolutely brilliant teaching with so much potential. So if you enjoyed it, please click like, comment down below, let me know what you thought, hit subscribe. And guys, throughout this week, how can you love your enemies? I think it could change everything. Thank you guys.